Hello, folks. Thanks for joining us for this time of practice and reflection and community. And uh, really sweet to see see folks here in the Zoom room. Those are, are able to join us at this time. And uh, if you're practicing with us later through the YouTube link, um, we're, we're glad you're with us as well. This talk is a bit of a follow-up from one a few weeks back now. And uh, I said I would get back to this, this topic. And then there were a couple other themes that came up in between, one being Earth Day. And I think the other one was, uh, was my birthday. Yeah. Um, no, Earth Day is a while back, isn't it? Whoa, whoa, I'm very foggy. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, circling back to this this topic, um, and I'll put a link below in the YouTube recording to this talk that we're segueing from that was on karma, or in Pali, it's known as kama, K-A-M-M-A, but most people just use the word karma, that's a Sanskrit word, and so... Uh, I, I won't go into all of that because it's a whole thing. Uh, but if you're if you want to start there, it, this might make more sense. <laughs> I hope this makes some sense. And so what I'm going to share tonight is in Buddhism, there's it's all Dharma. It's all Dharma, and there's different flavors of dharma that express different aspects of it in in different ways so there's zen buddhism mahayana buddhism Theravadan buddhism tibetan buddhism and so what i'm mentored in, in practice um, what i'm offering it comes from Theravadan buddhism so i just want to give that with this topic tonight which is around rebirth, um, that's a particular understanding that I'm coming from. And it's a little bit different with those different lenses. And I also want to say that my understanding is limited. <laughs> this is uh, as best I know, as I've been taught and as I've studied, um, and hopefully there's something here that sparks some curiosity or interest for you that you could keep reading, exploring, um, meeting with a teacher, um, and practicing with. So mm, this, this, well, this came up in an in-person class fairly recently where somebody was asking about reincarnation i forget what the context was i yeah doesn't matter and hmm so it's something we probably have curiosity about and we hear reference to um and different ideas about and so Hopefully, there's something here that's a little bit clarifying. Um, in Theravadan Buddhism, um, the word rebirth is used more than the word reincarnation. Reincarnation often implies for people a sense of a a stable, separate, continuous self that moves from one body to another. This is often what people think of when they hear the word reincarnation, that this self moves into another body. And this is different then the understanding of what's more frequently called rebirth. 
rebirth in, is referring to the karmic continuum. And this is why I'm mentioning in the previous recording talking about karma and some of the some of what that entails. So rebirth is about karmic continuum. The uh which is which is different than a separate continuous um stable self that moves from one body into another body. So I need to talk a little bit about uh, what has been conveyed about the dying process, the time leading up to dying the, and the dying process. which is really a process, like everything is a continuum. Everything is arising, passing, flowing, interrelated, continuous. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> there's something called, well, I'll just throw out a few poly words here just because I can't help myself. <laughs> Tara Lambana. This is something uh, that's called registering consciousness. So when uh, a, a conscious being, a sentient being, is uh, very close to this, this dying moment, uh, There's this, what I just mentioned, called registering consciousness. And it's understood that this lasts for two thought moments. These very brief two thought moments are when it actually registers. <laughs> when it actually fully registers and lands with the conscious being, ah, dying is happening now. I find that interesting. And it reflects the deaths that I've been present with. And it makes sense to me. There's this registering consciousness briefly. Okay, and then there's what's called death consciousness or terminal thought, um, kutichita, terminal thought. And this, this is preceded by and conditioned by karma. So again, we're referencing the understandings the truth of karma. Karma conditions and effects, it, it can't not <laughs> condition and affect death consciousness or um, what's called terminal thought, kutichita. So these, these two topics are deeply interrelated and really need to be referencing the understandings of karma. I know this is super technical, but I hope to wrap it into uh, what's relevant and, and how we practice with it you know, in a few moments. I'm just going to get through this part. Now, it's also true and understood that in dying moments, very like actual dying moments, there is not enough energy and clarity, really not enough energy to have volitional or intentional power 
and control over our thoughts. By that time, the elements have almost all left the body and, and there just isn't that amount of control or energy to be able to choose what we're thinking. Rather, what then is happening in these moments is the karmic energy, particularly a very um, powerful or impressive events that have arisen in this in this life experience. It's very interesting mm. to maybe do some reading or sharing if, if, if with folks that have, you know, had near-death experiences or, um, you know, where we're kind of, you talk about, you know, life flashing before your eyes, like, you know, what comes through in those moments? there's there's kind of these this some some you know describe like a life review or something but it's not like the whole life it's these strong mm, karmic energies um that have been that have that have been powerful or impressive in the in the psyche, in the heart, body, mind. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and it is this, um, conditioning and this energetic effect which then conditions what's called relinking consciousness patisandi vinyana relinking consciousness is how it was shared with me and what makes sense uh, for me is represented in this this image relinking consciousness maybe um looks like this so here is uh here's the being also a very nice candle <laughs> and uh so this is a a, a body a form a being that has consciousness. And, mm, it, well, that's another whole thing, but, uh, you know, so, so there can be, mm -hmm, that's a whole thing about what happens at birth, but anyways, uh, about a body and a, a wick. Not not every union of sperm and egg create life. There's a consciousness. So we have wick and we have form, candle, and there's consciousness. And all the karmic conditions of this life experience have they don't just disappear they have a momentum they have an energy they have a hmm, don't have another word so they create condition relinking consciousness which looks like if we want an image for it like this that's falling off here.
So this is not the same body, the same wick. It's not even the same flame, right? It's not the same flame. It just, this conditioned this arising. This is a symbol of relinking consciousness. The, the Buddha was often asked, often, I don't know how often, it comes up several times in the suttas, of um, where people would really try to pin down uh, um, an, an answer, a response from the Buddha about, you know, does, and they refer to him in these teachings as a Tathagata. Tathagata is a title that means one thus gone. The, the meaning uh, after the Buddha was awakened, he was uh, sometimes referred to in this way as the one who has gone this way uh, through to enlightenment. And so they would ask the Tathagata, do, does the Tathagata exist after death? And, uh, and the reply was, you know, um, that has not been proclaimed by the Buddha. Oh, okay, well then, th does the Tathagata not exist after death? That too has not been proclaimed. Oh, Oh, so then they're like, the questioner is kind of like, oh, I get it, you know, because sometimes things are neither this nor that. And so they say, oh, oh, so wait, the Tathagata neither exists nor doesn't ex exist. They like think they've got it like, oh, it's a bit of a this and a that thing. They're like, no, that hasn't been proclaimed either. And then when further asked, after the fact, you know, why, why didn't you answer that, that person? Why did, why did you? And, and the reply was, because if I had said A, B, or C, whichever answer I had given, he could see through his insight that that, that person would have clung to it. And, and, and clinging, <laughs> is the cause of dukkha. Clinging is the cause of suffering, of stress, all of its forms of dukkha. So he would intentionally not answer that question, but would often, uh, it, it's not a direct words, but it's not the right question. Because the real question is, are we understanding dukkha and the ending of dukkha? Are we understanding suffering, its cause, and its ending? Moment by moment, in this lifetime, through the path. Mm. Yeah, so when we're really looking for, you know, what something to hold on to to see oh i'm looking for something to hold on to and is that liberating no it's not liberating in and of itself what's liberating is can be practiced with and understood and seen in what is called kanika marana momentary deaths this is really an alive and awake place where, because at these moments of death, we do not have the volitional control, but right now we do. This is good news. Right now we do have volitional intention, insight, energy, wisdom, to practice skillfully, to have a, a an impact on how we respond to life, how we respond to 
all the things that are happening. Mm. So now is the time to practice dying every day, all the time. And some of us, you know, really bring this intention into every day with reflections on impermanence, um, with mm, gratitude reflections at the end of a day. This day has ended. My life is shorter. Let me look closely. What have I done? May I live each day with wisdom and compassion, etc. So, you know, to really bring these reflections into every day, moment by moment, is um, where we have liber liberating possibility and freedom to bring wise intention and wise action, and wise speech, and the whole of the path. Hmm. So, last, the, in that last time, a few weeks ago, when we were talking about karma, and I do wish it was we were talking. It would be great if it was like more of a discussion, but here we are on YouTube and this is how it is. Um, but anyways, if you ever want to just have a discussion, be happy to do that. Shoot me a message. Um, so when I was talking about that a few weeks ago, there was a focus on really uh, clarifying that there's infinite causes and conditions that give rise from so many things that are beyond our conceptual knowing, so many factors, intergenerationally, vastly, environmentally, etc. There's so many causes and conditions that give rise to this present moment that it's not so helpful to look at karma in that way where we're like, well, that's your bad karma because you did that two months ago. It's not that linear and isolated a thread. But in the and in the present moment, this is where we do have volition to have some responsibility to what we do with what's currently arising. How do we respond? What speech comes from this? What actions? What, what practice? And we can see through some of these reflections shared tonight how the karma of a lifetime does condition rebirth consciousness. So there is a relationship to this lifetime's karma and how it will condition rebirth consciousness. Oh, all right. Is there anything else here? Just a sec. Um, no, that's enough. <laughs> That's enough confusing thoughts for one night. And and there's no need to try to get this. It took me quite a bit of reading and notes and trying to like put the put these things together from various um references. So don't feel like you need to remember anything that I've just said or what comes in what order, but to um, understand particularly Kanika Marana, momentary deaths, because all of these moments of these last, however long I've been talking, 25 minutes, are gone. 
completely gone, dead. And each breath is a rising and passing, not to be breathed again. Each thought moment, each action, each speech is born, arising, passing. And this is where we practice. This is where we practice liberation and freedom and waking up and um, responding, respondability. Hmm. So let's practice, which is what it's all about. So adjust your space and support, your lighting. You might want to turn away from the camera if that's helpful to you. Hmm. So you might find it helpful to take a few sighing breaths and just mm, let go of any tension or attachment to any of these thoughts and words. See what posture is supportive to awakening. Awakening. And so we want to find some relaxing of habit tensions within a posture that is upright and wakeful. So see if there's any tension in the face, the muscles, of the head, the face, the neck, that could soften or let go a little bit, or just bring kind attention to any tension that's felt in the area of the face and neck. And then as the shoulders are reminded that the bones could just rest down, feeling the sides of the neck lengthening as the shoulders drop away from the ears. Feeling into the areas of the heart center and the belly center. These are areas where we can be holding fear, grief, tension, numbness. See if there's anything here that can just have a bit of space or release to some degree. Relaxed hands. So that as the upper body begins to 
soften or land, relax a little bit. We might feel more weightedness, presence through the, the pelvis, the hips, legs, feet. If you're practicing laying down, you might feel more groundedness or settledness through the whole back body. Feel the body in relationship with this earth held by, alive with the earth, resting with, not separate. And then take some time to recall or reflect on your values. It may be the five precepts. It may be just a, a some time contemplating, reflecting on your values of how you want to show up for yourself and for the world, for each other. For some of us, we undertake the training to refrain from causing harm. The training to refrain from taking what isn't freely given. The training to refrain from speaking falsely or harmfully, harshly. The training to refrain from causing harm with our sexuality and sensuality. And the training to refrain from heedless, heedlessness or lack of mindfulness caused by intoxicants. So those are the five precepts for lay persons, um, but if those aren't familiar with you, just contemplate what are your values. We'll do that together for these next few moments. And then feel how, feel in your heart, body, mind, how these values, this, these ethics that guide your life, really nourish, energize, and guide skillfulness, kindness, compassion, care, community. Oh. 
all these things that condition and affect karmic outcomes. Are coming from our wise intentions. What does that feel like in your body? Is there a sense of energy or warmth or connection? Where do you feel that? Maybe a sense of spaciousness or interconnectedness, really supported by sila, by your ethical values. And just see if that can land for you in your body as a felt experience, energizing, protection. And then utilizing this volitional, this intentional energy to cultivate what is wholesome, onward leading, wise, feeling that energy in your heart, body, mind, will let this inform our metta practice. So you could silently repeat these intentions, aspirations, beginning with ourselves. May I be happy. This means may I be free from dukkha. May I be happy. May I be safe and protected, particularly from harmful mind states. May I be as well as possible in body and mind. May I be well. May I be peaceful. May I live with inner ease. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. And then invite into awareness someone that has been a benefactor to you, a guide, a teacher, a, a support, a carer, caregiver. And this could be a teacher from some time ago in your past. It could be an animal that has taught us something. It could be um, a wise figure like the Dalai Lama or any other, but some being that really lights up your heart where you feel uh, you've been supported by their wisdom and care. 
and bringing them into awareness, offering in your deepest heart's intention, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. Just rest with that heart intention or repeat those phrases with the benefactor. And then taking a moment to reconnect if you felt any disconnect with the body, with the ground, with your own heart in this present moment. And now we'll invite in and cultivating kind, friendly awareness with mm, a being that is, is called a neutral being. So this may be someone that you don't have a strong like or dislike for, someone that you kind of see in your daily life. Um, it could be someone at a shop or in your neighborhood or near where you live uh, that someone that delivers things to you perhaps or at a gas station and just let them stand in to represent all of the beings that are often going unnoticed in our lives And with them in heart-mind awareness, cultivating this aspiration, intention, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. And feel this cultivation within your own heart center in relationship to neutral being. Happy, safe, well, peaceful.
Gently bowing to or releasing that intention. Reconnect with body, heart center in this present moment. And now we bring into awareness some relationship where there's some confusion or frustration or um, unresolved, not, not a really big conflict, but just some disconnect or confusion in a relationship where it feels slightly difficult right now. As much as you can, stay connected to your own heart center in relationship with the difficult being and growing, cultivating this heart intention. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. And you can continue with your own words or these words for a few more moments with this um, difficult situation. And releasing that intention, feel the ground, feel your heart center. And then like a pebble dropped into a still pond, concentric ripples of awareness that Ripple out and open, including awareness of those who live nearby us or in our closer circle of proximity and relationship. And then letting awareness gently, not conceptually, just lightly, energetically expand through your wider community or town. All of those beings. Slightly wider awareness expanding beyond borders and boundaries. not bound by oceans or mountains or lines drawn in the sand. Spacious and wide open awareness in all directions. All 
beings. May all beings everywhere be free from dukkha. May all beings be happy. May all beings everywhere be safe. And well, may all beings everywhere live in safety, ease, care, compassion, wisdom. So whether one believes in rebirth or not, we all are experiencing momentary deaths and rebirth. And we condition the karmic conditioning and rebirth in we have an effect on next moments, what is being reborn by our practice. <laughs> so we just practice metta, cultivating loving kindness, good intentions, well wishes for ourselves, for all beings, pleasant and unpleasant, liked and not liked. And this is conditioning karma. This is conditioning, rebirth, consciousness. And it matters. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And uh, somebody will... Um, be offering practice next week or or there may be a break if if there isn't a guest teacher but i will be back after that thanks